You can see our full interview with Holly Holmes last year on our website, NewMexicoInFocus.org. I'm Gene Grant here at the table with this week's line opinion panelists. We have one more topic to cover this week. Bernalillo County Commissioners voted 3-2 to two last week to select Democrat Idalia Lechuga Tena to fill the vacancy in Albuquerque's House District 21. That was left when Representative Stephanie Maez stepped down. Now, Lechuga Tena is under scrutiny because she admitted to voting in an election before she became a U.S. citizen. And Sophie, there are also questions about whether Ms. Lechuga Tena actually lives in the district she represents. I'm going to use a term Dan used a little bit, a couple segments ago. Big deal about nothing. She's come out and said, look, I was young. I, you know, kind of messed up. Or I is this actually... Gonna, I think it's going to end up being a big deal. Okay. And, and just as much a big deal, really, as, as those two things that you've mentioned mm -hmm. are the fact that she was uh, put into that position by two Republicans and a Democrat who is not the Democrat right. who represents that part of the county. Mm -hmm. um, and there are already, it's more than whispers, there mm -hmm. are already open conversations about... Um, finding somebody to primary against her. I, 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 my sense is that she cannot expect, with, with everything we've seen so far, mm -hmm. that she cannot expect party support when it comes time for her to actually run for election. That's They're an really interesting damaging. point there. That's very interesting. Pick up on that, if you would, the, the party support on this. Is it, is it too big a ding to get past in, in your view, or is this something she can manage? That's a loaded question. I know, isn't it, though? <laughs> As a former executive director, um, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, the party support can be really helpful, but it's helpful after the primary. I mean, ah. up until the primary, it's really anybody's game. Okay. And I, so being primaried initially, um, you know, she's going to have to put in a lot of work in order to, to get there. And, and I think that there's a lot of people already um, scratching their heads about, you know, how did she get in there in the first place? And mm -hmm. she got two Republican votes, which doesn't bode well, I think, for her in terms of the Democratic Party, the party faithful. Sure. So I think she will have a challenge there. But, you know, my understanding is, and talking to some folks from that district, is that she actually has, has also been very active in um, organizing the um, International District Festival, apparently, oh, for many years. Okay, and she's been that. also a neighborhood leader. Um, so she's been active in her neighborhood association. Okay. So she actually does have some legitimate ties to the community. Right. Um, but I think that some of the other negatives um, are going to be exploited in the campaign. But is this something to be hung on forever in her life? Isn't there some point you can get past this doing these kind of community things? I mean, well, I mean, I think part of the problem is that these things will, will be resurrected every time she tries yeah. to run for something. So she has to have something um, very clear to address it, maybe something to point to that she's done. And I think mm. she's going to be, she's going to have a challenge doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's something she's going to have to address. Interesting. Daniel? Well, I think that, you know, the interesting part is that now, you know, for years there's been talk about voter ID, passing the voter air. ID laws. It's in the air. It's been yep. there forever. Yep. And the, the, the constant remark from from Democrats in the legislature, was, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have someone in the legislature that Republicans can say, it exists. They're sitting right there. <laughs> they said they did it. Yeah. And so I think this really causes a problem moving forward. For the voter ID uh, idea that as far as Democrats trying to oppose what the Republicans have been asking for. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I disagree with my good friend. I think party support is more helpful in the primary than it is in the general. You're mm -hmm. going to get it in the general. Mm -hmm. The primary, if you've got pro party support, real opposition goes away. And, you know, There's if... No party if, support in the primary. Uh, not in the Democratic... Uh, you know, of course not. You're speaking for the Republicans. Not. No, of course. The Democrats, the Democrats have always followed the rules. There's been no primary support from the Democrats. I assume this is satire mm -hmm. on your part. No, 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 not, not me. <laughs> I mean, the thing but, is But that here's the thing. If, if she's got you, support, if, she's, if, if the people in the party are not for her, yeah. then you're going to find a well-organized, well-funded primary opponent. Right. If the people in the party are for her, then you're going to have a bunch of self-starters out there trying to run against mm -hmm. her. And I think it's going to be a tough road to hoe if the party doesn't come, come to her defense as an incumbent. At the end of the day, I do find it interesting that you look at the, the folks, the Mimi Stewarts of the world that are opposing mm -hmm. uh, this, this lady who came through a path of citizenship and they're opposing her to be a state representative. It just seems interesting that it, maybe it doesn't fit those people in the party's view of what they should be having. So I think candidate. maybe, maybe mm -hmm. we should make a distinction because it sounded like there was a distinction and, mm -hmm. and we're not talking about the same thing. So there's party support in terms of the actual party providing, you know, their resources. Like right. there's a party mechanism, or, yeah. right. they have a structure. That kind of support doesn't occur in gotcha. the primary. Of However, course. there are party activists. There are individuals who are very party faithful, right. and those people tend to be involved in a lot of different elections. I think if we're talking about that, sure, there are people within the party, if they support her, mm -hmm. then she's likely to have, because it's sort of a, a ready-made people who know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where she's going to have some some problems. That's, but, what, that's what I was saying. It's, okay. The party's 
so not going to write her a check. Right, but no. if the Democrat Party says, this is our person, then all these activists that are in the deals are going to say, well, we're for Well, her. they can't do, say this is our, well, officially the party right. can't say this is our person. But if they let but, them know that they don't like her, it's going to be hard for her to get that. It could be. Um, but here's the thing, you know, to tie it back to another situation, the Democratic Party mm -hmm. is, uh, either party, is important in terms of certain other races, like the Supreme Court nominations that we've seen recently, right, where people basically, mm -hmm. the party has to select who their, their nominee is going to be. And mm -hmm. to tie it back to the recent appointment of um, Judith Nakamura mm -hmm. to the Supreme Court, you're going to see a challenge, I think, a really strong challenge for the, from the Democratic Party against her um, mm -hmm. in this next election. Interesting. Got to wrap. Thanks, guys. Good stuff on a Friday night. Really appreciate it. I'm Gene Grant. Thanks for joining us this week on the Mexico in Focus. And as always, we appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged. We'll see you next week in Focus. Get a preview of what's coming up on the next New Mexico in Focus. It's easy. Sign up for our weekly email at newmexicoinfocus.org.